Not long ago, I met a young woman, let's call her Angie, who told me about a recent healthcare experience. She said that she wasn't feeling well, so she went to urgent care. The nurse told her that she had a bladder infection and gave her an antibiotic, a prescription for an antibiotic. She said if she took the antibiotic for five days, the infection would go away. But Angie didn't fill the prescription. She had to spend $10 to buy diapers for her young child. Five days later, Angie had a horrible fever and an excruciating pain in her side. She went to the emergency room where she had to wait for six hours. She even passed out in the waiting room. When she finally got in to see the doctor, they did some tests and they told her that the infection had gone into her kidney and was spreading through her bloodstream. The emergency room visit cost $1,900. And the hospital stay, she had to be in the hospital in intensive care for two days and another three days in the hospital. The hospital stay cost her $10,000. And then she had to sp spend $100 to give to a neighbor to take care of her young child. The, the prescription would have cost Angie $5, but instead she was in debt for $12,000, and then, because she missed five days of work, she lost her job. Thinking about how to make solutions for young women like Angie is a big part of my job as the dean of the U University of New Mexico College of Population Health. That's a big mouthful. So the U.S. spends $3.2 trillion a year on health care. That's with a T, trillion. We have pretty bad health statistics. That $3.2 trillion is more than five times the budget of the entire U.S. Department of Defense. But these health, bad health statistics, for example, we, our maternal mortality rate, meaning the women who die in childbirth, is going up. But for all other countries, it's going down. And our quality indicators, we have the worst quality indicators of any health system in the industrialized world. Only 3% of the money we spend on health care is for prevention, like smoking cessation or immunizations or screening tests. We spend about 25% of our total lifetime health expenditures in the last six months of our lives. My dad, who had heart disease and kidney failure and diabetes, spent the last two weeks of his life in the hospital. The bill was $100,000. He was in a cold and unfriendly environment away from his friends and most of his family. He was scared and he was in pain and there was nothing that I could do about it. He got poked and prodded by nurses and every specialist wanted to do something different to save him. Finally, he had had enough, and he said to the doctor, please, I just want to go home to die. And the doctor said, Mel, if you leave without our permission, Medicare won't reimburse us for your stay, and your daughters, my sister and I, will be left with a huge burden. And then to make it worse, he said to him, but you won't make it home alive anyway. So instead of being able to give my dad the send-off that he deserved, full of love and dignity, my sister and I are left with this terrible memory of the last two weeks of my father's life. Our whole health system is focused on illness. Doctors and hospitals only get paid when their patients are sick. We need to figure out how they can make money by saving money, 
I think we need to take the I out of illness and replace it with a we for wellness. About 80% of the factors that affect our health come from our environment, our social situation, and our health behavior. We call these social determinants of health. If we really wanted to have a healthy country, we would make sure that everybody had access to healthy food, lived in safe neighborhoods, and had access to low-cost transportation. At your last medical visit, did your doctor ask you if you shopped in a store that had fresh fruits and vegetables? Or how many times in the last week you ate fast food? In our work in the rural areas of New Mexico, we find that for many people, the only fruits and vegetables they have come in cans packed in high salt water or high sugar syrup. The least expensive foods are chips and salsa. And those stores are making a lot of money off of selling tobacco and alcohol. Our focus on illness is costly and often ineffective. My friends, the doctors who I work with, say that because we can't address the social determinants of health for our patients, that the patient's health suffers and the medical care they give is often ineffective. Why do we need the we in wellness? We should make communities the focus of our health investments. We know why some people have trouble taking care of themselves. We can identify geographic pockets of poor health. Our communities would benefit if our health systems were to repurpose some of their resources to collaborate, to partner with community organizations. Can you imagine if our doctors could give out prescriptions for housing, or transportation, or food? We could use innovations to address some of these problems. We could have a less expensive form of Uber to pick people up and take them to their doctor appointments or to some place they could exercise or ec learn to cook right. We could deliver fresh fruits and vegetables to a central area in the rural parts of New Mexico with a drone. We do that for refugees, why not our own population? Homeless shelters are good for emergencies, but couldn't we take some of those unused motels and repurpose them as apartments for the homeless? These solutions are available, so why aren't we already using them as a standard of care for our poorest and our sickest? I think when we change from illness to wellness, our health systems will think of a different way to provide care. The urgent care clinics will ask people, do you have the money to pay for this prescription? And then they'll call them to see if they took their medication. Young women like Angie will be able to take care of themselves and their young children, be able to keep their jobs and stay out of debt. I think if we can address the social determinants of health for all of our populations, the U.S. will be a healthier place to live.